In this video, we're going to talk about system of equations and how to solve them using what's called the substitution method. So first, I'm just going to talk algebraically what's the procedure to efficiently solve for the system. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about what it means graphically. So first of all, let's say you're just given this, these two equations. So a system of equations, first of all, is really just when you have more than one of them. If you have more than one equation, that's a system, and you're asked to solve for it, you're basically asked to solve for the x and y value that makes that happen. So instead of a single equation where you have to solve for a single variable, now you have two equations, for example, and you have to solve for two variables. So the easiest way to do it, the substitution method, is basically this. In one of the equations, doesn't matter which one, solve for one of the variables, doesn't matter which one. Here, that's kind of already done for you. The first equation is y equals something. So once that's done, once one of the equations, if it's already not like that, you could, as we'll do in a sec, manipulate it to get it to be like that. But once it's like that, once one of the equations is already basically solved for one of the variables, notice it's not a number, it's, it's still something in terms of the other, but it's still by itself on one side. There's no other y's here, so we're good. So once you have that, you substitute. You substitute this y into the other equation. So that's important. You, you know, you have to go to the, you have to use both equations, right? So we're using this y from this equation, seeing what that's equal to, and we're basically swapping out the y in this equation. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm basically going to transcribe. I'm just going to write out the second equation with the y substituted. So that's going to be negative 3x minus 2, not y, but I'm going to replace y. What's y equal to? 5x minus 7. So instead of y, 5x minus 7. Now I'm going to go back to just transcribing it down equals negative 12. So all I've done is I've basically written this equation, but with this y replaced with what it really equals based on the other equation. Once you have it down to here, it's just algebra. It's no different than the uh, one, e one variable, one equation problem. So here we just have to be careful with distribution. So that's going to be negative 3x, and then minus 2 times 5 is negative 10x, but then minus 2 times negative 7 is positive 14, so plus 14 equals negative 12. From here we can combine like terms. Negative 3 minus another 10 is negative 13x equals, if you subtract 14, negative 12 minus 14 is negative 26. Divide both sides by negative 13x is going to equal positive 2. And once you have that, how do you find y? Well, now you can go back to that first equation where you solved for y, but now replace the x with the exact number that it's equal to. So x is going to equal 2, so y is going to equal 5x, which is 2, minus 7. So 5 times 2 is 10, 10 minus 7 is 3, so y is 3. So your final answer is x is 2, y is 3. Sometimes your final answer will be reported as like in x comma y, kind of like it's a coordinate point format. So in this case, it'll be reported as 2 comma 3. All right. Let's just do one other example, and then we'll talk about what this means graphically. So let's say it's this. Let's say 2x plus y is 20, and 6x minus 5y is 12. So again, doesn't matter which equation, and doesn't matter which variable. Whichever one looks easier, pick one and solve for one of the variables. So here, the trick there is to try to pick one without a coefficient in front of it, if, there, uh, if you can. So here, there's a 2x, 6x, negative 5y, but just a y here without anything in front of it, right? So strategically, I could solve for this y just by subtracting out 2x from both sides. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to strategically pick this guy, subtract 2x from both sides, and when I do that, this becomes, subtracting the 2x, so y equals 20 minus 2x, right? Now that I have that, I'm going to remember, go to the other equation. Go to this equation and substitute what? The y, because that's what I solved for. Again, I didn't have to solve for y. I could have solved for x if I wanted to, if it was easier. 
and then I would have substituted here. But here I just chose the y again. So plugging that in here, this equation then becomes, so I'm just transcribing it, transcribing it down, 6x minus 5y, the y is really 20 minus 2x, so 6x minus 5y equals 12, right? All right, once we have that, just the algebra from here. 6x distribute to negative 5, so that's going to be negative 100 plus 10x, because negative times negative is positive, equals 12. And uh, let's see, we got 6 plus 10, 16x equals, if we add 100 to both sides, we have 112. And then we can just do 112 divided by 16. I can't do that in my head, so I'm just going to do it in my calculator. 112 divided by 16, and you get 7. So x is equal to 7. All right. And then you could solve for y, again, by going back to this equation that you had solved for and replacing x now. So y is 20 minus 2x, right? So that's going to be 20 minus 2x, but x is really 7. So 20 minus 14, which is 6. So y is 6, x is 7. So I can even say 7 comma 6 is my final coordinate point as, as my answer, x comma y. So let's, let's think a little bit more about system of equations and what it means graphically. Now, in both of these problems, it didn't look like it, but basically both variables, uh, both equations were lines, right? There was no square or square root or any other fancy thing here. It's just y equals mx plus b, right? It wasn't written in mx plus b format, but you could, there essentially is a way to solve it such that it is. And so long story short, in both in both of those cases, each of those equations was a different line. So let's do this example. So here, this is easier to see that both of these are lines. So what does it mean when you solve for that system? Well, what it means is you're solving for the intersection of those two lines. You're solving for that xy coordinate point that exists both on this line and on this line. And if you have two lines, they're going to intersect just once, right? They can't intersect exactly at two places or anything, right? So there's just going to be one whenever you have two lines. In the next video, we'll see what happens uh, in more advanced cases where uh, they can, you can have no solutions or infinitely many solutions. But for now, it's just going to be exactly one solution. And so here's what this looks like. So graphically, let's say this guy, y equals negative x plus 100. What would that look like? That is a slope of negative 1 and a y-intercept of 100. So that's 100 with a slope of negative 1. So that's like that. What about this guy? This is a slope of an intercept of 10 and a slope of 2. That's an intercept of 10 and a slope of 2. That's steeper, like this. So here you have two mx plus b's, right? And they sort of go like infinitely long. So they're kind of like this. And so to solve for the system is essentially solving for this intersection point. It's what xy coordinate point is both on the red line and on the blue line. So that's what you're doing here. So now notice whenever both of them are already in like y equals something, y equals something, when you substitute, again, so we're still following the same procedure. It's already solved in this, so we're just going to substitute that in here. But then that equation becomes, we substituted y, y is negative x plus 100. And then this side, we're just transcribing as is. 2x plus 10. All right, solving for this is going to be easier than we think. Add x to both sides, so that's going to be 3x. And subtract 10 from both sides, 100 minus 10 is 90. So 90 equals 3x. Divide both sides by 3, you get x equals 30. All right, so x equals 30. That seems reasonable. And now, when you plug in x equals 30, notice you could plug it back in here, or you could plug it back in here. And in either case, you're saying when x is 30, what's the y value on this uh, red line, uh, on this red line versus on this blue line? And which one should you plug it in to get your y value? It actually doesn't matter. In fact, you should get the same number when you plug it in here versus here. If you get a different y value, you made an algebra mistake somewhere. So let's just plug them in. Here, if you plug in x equals 30, that's going to be negative 30 plus 100, which is 70. And if you were to plug it in here, 
2 times 30, which is 60, plus 10, that's also 70. Okay, good. So 30 comma 70, that point, when x is 30, y is 70 on both those lines, that's the only one point they share in common, and that's why that's the solution to that system of equations.